once again for the House Whisperer Show on WWDB Talk 860. I'm Barry Rice, been inviting you to stay tuned for expert advice about maintaining your house from the roof to the basement featuring professional home inspector Jack Milne. And Jack, uh, I'll take a little credit for today's topic, okay? Uh, absolutely, Barry. Um, you know, that's what's great about, you know, what I do for a living. Uh, Barry came up with an idea a couple weeks ago about saying, why don't you do a segment on DIY? In other words, do it yourself. Yeah, so, which, I, which, I, which I am not very good at at all. Well, you know, I think it's like anything else. If, if you start a little bit slow uh, and you build up, you know, progress is a wonderful thing. <laughs> but uh, before we start, I want to thank my sponsors because, again, without them, I wouldn't be on the air. So um, I want to thank Pank, uh, Pest Blaster. Today we'll do phone numbers at 215-295-5555. Uh, they're involved with radon testing, mold testing, wood destroying insect evaluations, as well as pest removal. So with winter uh, hopefully about over here, again, if you're starting to get those pesky pests, then give Pest Blaster a call, and they'll come out and they'll give you a hand. Buxmont Inspections, again, for those folks who have on-site sewage systems, if you're finding that your grass is growing a lot taller in certain areas of your home, chances are you might have to get it serviced. So reach out to Rob Bowie at 215-669-4213. Barrow Exterminating, a great group uh, out of Glenold in Pennsylvania. Again, termite and radon testing. Uh, Rob and crew are just uh, professional through and through. And their number is 610-586-5640. Brainflushgear.com. I'm working with them now because we do an annual motorcycle trip. This year we're going to Kentucky. Uh, so I've been in touch with Kevin Zollner, and uh, we are working on the concept for this year's trip. Plus I gave him a couple new ideas, uh, too, so I'm looking forward to nailing those uh, concepts and actually wearing uh, what I ordered. It's pretty cool stuff. So brainflushgear.com or email a contact at brainflushgear.com. And finally, Tri-County Inspection Company, um, my company I've owned uh, since 1985, the 70,000-plus inspections we've done, and, and we touch on everything. Uh, we also do partial inspections for those folks out there that say, do I need, really need a waterproofing contractor? Um, why don't you get the opinion of a professional home inspector first? Because we only charge a f you know, one fee. We have no interest in actually doing the work as we're not allowed to. But we'll, we will actually give you the appropriate insight uh, to make repairs and simple things to do first before you, uh, you may have to spend those big bucks. So why don't you reach out to us at 215-295-2030 in the Lehigh Valley, 610-346-7880. And uh, even you in Ocean City, where I heard the show the other day, 609-882-5188. And by the way, do me a favor. If you reach out to these folks, let them know that you heard the ad on the House Whisperer show. I, I always appreciate that, too. A quick visit to the email, uh, email box, Brenda from Philadelphia. Uh, she actually called me, and we had a chance to speak for a while. But uh, these were some of her thoughts. She's from Philadelphia. She's been renting an apartment for the last three years, and she called to let me know that she's ready to put that big toe, as I love that quote, into the pool called home ownership. We spoke about various options regarding price, availability. She does want to remain in the city but wants no maintenance. So by the, by the end of the conversation, uh, I think we, we both are on the same page that she's looking for a condo or a loft, uh, which may be you know, more of her personality. And all I can say is, Brenda, good luck on your search, and maybe I'll see you at your home inspection. But, folks, any questions anytime, send me an email at thehousewhisperershow at gmail.com. Of course, visit the website at thehousewhisperershow.com. And one thing I really enjoy about WWDB is that they do have a podcast, which is WWDBAM.com, and it's always available, you know, in case you miss me on Sunday. So today's topic, DIY, do it yourself. And honestly, can you? So when, when I do a home inspection and I meet couples, you know, and, and even single folks, uh, I ask them the same question, are you handy? And, you know, responses, folks, are really across the board and, and, and sometimes enlightening. 
And I had a young man you know, who was in his 30s who moved to Pennsylvania from New York and never had to do anything as to maintenance. But at the same time, I had a nice woman who was over 55 who was buying a new home with her husband who actually knew more uh, <laughs> than her husband. So, you know, roles are reversed. And I said, all right, honey, you stick with me and, and, and you know, sir, you go take the measurements. So that was, that was, that was pretty fun. But, you know, the, the answers may be different, but I think, honestly, it all depends on how you were brought up. You know, was mom and dad hands-on? Uh, did they, you know, show you some of the basics? And, and basics to me is like, you know, cutting the lawn or trimming the shrubs or even as, as challenging as changing the filter to the heating and cooling equipment. And I find that sometimes when you're built up with tools and, hey, son, give me a hand over here, you know, grab that old tile style saw and, well, I'm using my circular saw, why don't you cut this board? Or why don't you bang some nails into a board? And I think that is what starts sparking the interest. I know years ago when my, when my younger son was five, we, um, we took a, a, a bar out in my home and we, and we were making changes. So I actually gave him my pry bar and I said, go to town. And it was so cool, you know, to see this kid with his little, you know, tool pouch on and, you know, with a hammer and a, and a crowbar in his hand and start to, to whack away at, at this little frame uh, structure. So I was there, of course, with him. Uh, when we, he needed a little bit more leverage, I gave it to him. But, uh, you know, he grew up. He's now 22, and, and he is well-versed in a lot of different things. My younger son, he's 13, and we're just starting to get him involved now. So I think it all depends on, on you know, how your mom and dad, you know, helped you through it. And, and I like the old saying, I know I'm going to massacre it, but I, it's, I think it's a quote from the Bible that says, if you give a man a fish, he can have a meal. If you teach him to fish, he can eat every night. So, again, Barry, my interpretation. You, you got it right. I think that's right. <laughs> so, but it's, it's so true. So any person today who knocks on your door will charge you 100 bucks, and then ask the question, what do you need? So <laughs> and you're right. If, after a while, you know, these $100 start adding up, and you start doing the math, and it's like, wow, I just spent, you know, $500 for different contractors just to say, what do you need? So I think that's called the incentive plan. And, uh, you know, and, and that's where I like to say, how can I learn to do this myself? So I'm going to tell you how. First off, do your homework. Read about what you want to do before you start, and especially if you're not familiar with the topic. And again, start small. You don't want to be in the middle of a plumbing project or an electrical repair and then running to the hardware store because, first off, it takes the effort, it takes time, and honestly, it raises frustration. And, you know, when you're doing actually something that could be deemed fairly simple, but you're spending an hour to an hour and a half running back and forth to the hardware store, and especially d- depending on where you live, um, you know, your, your one-hour project now turning into two or three. And, again, like I said, folks, start with the simple things like painting, okay? Now, guys, if you're married, and I've been married now 30 years, and it, it took about 15 years for me to realize this, I lost my sense of color. I'm not included in that conversation anymore. <laughs> but you should include the wife because at the end of the day, she's going to she's going to pick the color and you're going to nod uh yes or no. Okay? Now, if you do get a no, then maybe if it's a blue, you get you get your choice of a different shade of blue. But again, I had I had it made for about 15 years and after that I gave up. And that was on the advice of my neighbor, good old Uncle Ed. So, go to the paint store, buy good paint. You know, a good can of paint should run you about 20 bucks, you know, $22. Um, you don't have to spend 40 I, I think that's a little bit uh, over. Uh, but, you know, they're now selling paints with primer in them. Uh, personally, I would suggest a good primer first. Yes, you've got to do the job maybe twice. But if you have hard colors, and hard colors to me are the dark ones, the hunter greens, the, the maroons, uh, navy blues, 
uh, you absolutely have to do uh, a primer coat first. And I like a product called Kills. It's called K I L Z, okay, or actually spelled that way. Their better primer is is a lacquer primer. They do make one that's washable, but I find that the lacquer uh, seats better, seals better, and and hides better. The only thing is, folks, you gotta you gotta aerate you know the room really well because. As I like to tell my clients, you may be you, you may begin the project and remember that, but you may not remember finishing uh, because the fumes are, are kind of noxious. Not noxious, but you know <laughs> you got to be careful with it. So um, painting is all in the prep, and once you really start to brush and roll, uh, it, it actually goes fairly quickly. But the prepping is taping, and I've got professional painters that say I don't I don't tape. And you know what, folks? Honestly, in my house, I make them uh, because it's all about protecting your trim. Um, and in my house, everything is stained. So the last thing I want is to see a, another color on on the on the on my woodwork. Um, make take the time and spackle picture. You know, we had former picture hooks, nail pops. If you have nail pops, bang them back in. Just don't spackle. Drive a sheetrock screw next to the head that pops so that the screw will keep the nail head in and up because otherwise it's going to come back to visit. Hey, Jack, we have to take a little break and okay. pick it up where we left off. And you, you're so right about that uh, taping part. Uh, I know, I know the, they have the special blue painter's tape, which is a lot better than the masking tape. I, I know that much about the taping. It's good yeah, stuff. Yeah, you're right, Barry. Yeah. But, you know, before we go, just you know, keep in mind, I want you to make sure that you spackle twice and sand once. You're yeah, right. Okay. And then, and then ready, you're ready for prime. But we'll right, pick right. it. We'll pick it up. In, we'll pick it up in just a minute. Right after after these words with Jack Milne, the House Whisperer. Oro Exterminating has been specializing in wood destroying insect inspection and control for over 40 years. Serving Philadelphia and the surrounding counties, all inspectors are state certified and ensure providing their clients with professional inspections and treatments. Oro not only performs conventional termite treatments, but also handles special services like historic buildings and homes with wells, creeks, or ponds. The client is assured that all treatments will be performed safely when you hire Boro to do the work. They also provide radon testing in their service area. Boro's full-time office staff is available to help you schedule an appointment. Just call 610-586-5640 or send an email request to boroinspects at verizon.net. That's 610-586-5640 or email at boroinspects at verizon.net. Specially created t-shirts by BrainFlushGear.com offer the extreme sports enthusiast an opportunity to have a clothing line available that suits their sport. BrainFlushGear.com understands that when we get the moment where we can jump on our motorcycles, wave runners, surfboards, snowmobiles, or skateboards, it can be priceless. They offer custom artwork including silk screening, transfers, and embroidery. Speak to one of their consultants today and they'll help you create your own brain Flush. Visit BrainFlushGear.com or email them at contact at BrainFlushGear.com. For your septic inspection and testing needs, please consider Bucks Mont Inspections. They've been serving the Bucks and Montgomery County areas for over 15 years. As members of the Pennsylvania Septage Management Association, the Pennsylvania Association of Sewage Enforcement Officers, and the Pennsylvania Association for Professional Soil Scientists, Buxmont Inspections can inspect your existing septic system or test for your new septic system placement. Please call Rob Bowie at 215-669-4213 and say you heard their ad on the House Whisperer Show. As the summer months quickly arrive and the temperatures gradually rise, so do the odds of all those filthy and unwanted critters invading your home like rodents, roaches, termites, and flies. Oh, my. This summer, if you want to feel safe and secure from a possible creeping, crawling disaster, do yourself a favor and call the exterminating experts at Pest Blaster for all your pest control needs, including tests for radon and mold. Please visit PestBlaster.com and you'll be sold. 215-295-5555. 
Tri-County Inspection Company has been providing professional home inspections, commercial inspections, and historic property evaluations for over 25 years. Tri-County Inspection Company covers 13 counties serving both New Jersey and Pennsylvania. They've performed inspections for over 70,000 clients and are members of the American Society of Home Inspectors as well as the Pennsylvania Home Inspectors Coalition. They are licensed in both Philadelphia and New Jersey. For all of your real estate trans. Transactions. Call Tri-County Inspections at 215-295-2030. For their New Jersey clientele, call 856-853-4224. In PA, call 215-295-2030. In New Jersey, 856-853-4224. And we're back with Jack Milne, the house whisperer, right here at WWDB. And uh, Jack was talking about painting, and uh, we're going to go right back to Jack. Well, thank you, Barry. And, you know, before I leave painting, as I mentioned earlier, painting is all in the prep. So if, if you take that extra little special time and, and, and do great on your prep, then your paint will come out excellent. So take off your receptacle covers and take off your switch covers. Take off those heater grates. Take everything off so that when you start that project, uh, you can finish it cleanly. The next thing I want to kick in on are dimmer switches. Dimmer switches set the mood. And you can really change the, the complexity of a room, especially after that new paint, by adding a dimmer switch. Most people... Uh, besides electricians, uh, don't want to work with live current. Electricians are used to it. Home inspectors are used to it. We get zapped every once in a while. But for the newbie, I'm going to tell them to go down to the panel box and shut off the circuit of that space of which you're working. And you want to re-verify that with what we call a tick tracer. Five bucks at your local hardware store. You, t you stick it against the black wire. Uh, if it's still ticking away, folks, um, you, you shut off the wrong breaker. So before you start handling these wires, make sure the power is off. What I do when I start replacing my switches and or receptacles, I take one wire off the old switch and I apply it to the new switch. Uh, this way I'm going in the appropriate sequence. You should always do the neutral first, which is your white wire, followed by the, the black wire, which is your hot, and then you finish with the ground. And, you know, switching out a switch, I like that phrase, you know, it takes about 15 minutes. And by the time that you put it back in with a new wall, wall plate that you should anyway, uh, you can see the results of your work. And so you go down, you hit the power, you go back up, and you can watch your lights dim. And, and really, it's, it's a very simple project that most people can do. And since you're no longer an electrical virgin, so then what you can do is start playing with your receptacles. So you go back down, you turn the power back off, you use your tick tracer and make sure that the current is off, remove the cover plate, remove the two screws, you pull the receptacle out, use your tick tracer again, and again, do it the same way as you would with a switch. Now, new receptacles come with what we call push tabs. In other words, not only do you have set screws, but you can actually insert the wire with a little bit of force right in what I call the body of the receptacle. Most electricians will tell you not to use that simple process, even though it's available. Current, like water, and electricity flows. Okay, think of it like that. The wire can actually expand and contract. So... The electricians prefer, and I see it all the time, that you use the set screws that are on the side of the receptacle. Now, you're going to have two brass screws. In the old days, you used to have a brass and a silver, okay? Now we have dark brass and light brass. The dark brass wire is for the black wire, okay? The light brass wire is for the white wire, so white and light, dark and black, okay? So it's easy to follow. So if you need to, you know, cut the wire, strip the wire carefully, create a loop with your needle nose pliers, 
and insert this, the wire around the screw so that as you tighten the screw, it grabs the wire. If you do it backwards, the wire will actually move in the opposite direction and you won't get a good hold. And again, follow the same procedures. Do your neutral first, do your hot second, finish with the ground. Make sure none are in contact with each other because otherwise you'll end up with a short and you just ruined your good work by popping a circuit. And this is how you can uh, work around the room. You go ahead and reset the receptacle. Again, tuck the wires in carefully. Do not c let them come in contact. S put in your two receptacle screws, put in your cover plate, and you work around your room. And all of a sudden, this freshly painted room now has new receptacles and switches. Now, for those homes that were built prior to the mid-1960s, you might have receptacles that don't have a ground. So if that's the case and you're painting your new office, you can install a GFCI-rated receptacle in lieu of that little plug adapter with a surge protector. Okay? So that's a way that you can update your receptacles, and especially with office equipment. Now, keep in mind, if you hit your depots and your lows in your electrical stores, they do make updated two-prong receptacles. But it's very common for people to say, well, I need a three-prong here, so I'll just put one in. But folks, it won't be grounded. So it's not going to protect your high-end electronics like a GFCI would. So you know, do keep that in mind when you're doing your wiring. Uh, when you're remodeling, keep in mind that you have to bring everything up to current code. Current code and home inspectors, you know, we're not code officials because we're in 200-year-old homes like I was the other day, and I can be, be in a brand-new townhouse. But one thing we always stress is, is safety. And so in our kitchens and our bathrooms, we do suggest and recommend groundfall protection, again, GFCIs. Uh, if you don't know, those are your circuited receptacles that have the test and reset buttons. And a, and, a, and a simple rule of thumb is that for the bathroom that's closest to the panel box, if you put your GFCI there, you're going to wire it just like a standard receptacle now, it's going to protect the rest of the bathrooms. Sometimes, depending on if it's a townhouse, you might have to put it in the garage, but then that circuit, uh, especially if your panel box is in the garage, by the way, but then that GFCI will protect the rest of your bathrooms and sometimes your outside receptacle too. If you're doing your kitchen, well then it's gonna be the receptacle that's closest to the panel box. That way when the electrician renders the wires initially, he's gonna feed that first receptacle and then the rest in a loop. The only thing you have to be careful of is to make sure that your refrigerator is not on that GFCI because if it does trip, you don't wanna spoil the food. GFCIs are all about shock protection and to prevent electrocution. So if you don't have one, uh, your kitchen or bathroom is never too old to add one. So um, if you don't have a comfort level with electricity, of course I have to say hire an electrician, but I ask that you watch him and, and you can learn, just like that whole episode with the fish. He can do it, but you haven't learned anything. If you watch him, you, know, you now know how you can do it yourself. With plumbing, well, that's a whole different beast. We have so many different components in plumbing. We have washers, gaskets, traps, valves, wax rings. We're dealing with running water, and we're doing, dealing with sewage disposal. And I think that's one of the reasons plumbers make so much. Uh, because, man, if you do it wrong, you got a bad leak and it's a bad day, but every you have to almost purchase every conceivable part before you start and make sure that you turn the water off to the house. If you have to drain the house down, open up the lowest faucet or fixture or hose bib, this way the water is out of the plumbing supply. And if you have to, I always suggest that you upgrade anything with plastic uh, because today's uh, old brass drain lines, copper drain lines, um, they, they do tend to uh, uh, break miserably or, or remove miserably. Um, and honestly, when it comes to the waistline, folks, I, I do tell my, my clients to go right to the plumber because uh, if you do that wrong, the results of that one can be um, you know, disastrous. 
couplings are going to be needed, especially ha if you have to co join two dissimilar materials. Again, copper, brass, galvanized products, lead, uh, to your new PVC pipes. Old plumbing doesn't come apart well. It can crimp, it can collapse, it can't cut straight, and all these things can affect the outcome. And I ask that you know your limitations because plumbers on the weekend, um, and especially with emergency calls, uh, calls can really be a sizable sum. And especially if the water is off, the toilet's off the floor, the valve broke in your hand, and you have no other place to go. So um, anticipate almost a triple charge on a weekend uh, if you have an issue. So again, this is why I ask that you do your homework first, read up on anything that you're going to attempt to do, and then move forward. Keep in mind that any pipes that need to be cut will have to be cut clean with a, a pipe cutter. Uh, no hacksaws, folks. Uh, they have to be sanded with an emery cloth, and they have to be soldered properly. So if you're not used to dealing with that, you may want to consider uh, what we call uh, CPVC which can be cut by the appropriate tool. It's only about five bucks. It can be cleaned and glued, and it can be done by a novice. But you, again, you have to have the right connectors to marry dissimilar products. Well, Jack, unfortunately, we're out of time, but uh, your words to the wise ring true with me. Know your limitations. I think you're talking right to me. I've got many, many limitations. I'm good at changing a light bulb. That's about it. Well, like I said, folks, I did want to dedicate this show to Barry Reisman for his insight. <laughs> yes, but indeed. I, I really wanted to focus on electrical and plumbing because as a home inspector, these are typically the two things that I find if the homeowner attempts uh, and does it wrong, um, it, it can cost as, as much as two times the amount to get it corrected. and. Uh, Barry, as I always like to say it at the end of our shows, please spend time with friends and family. And I look forward to seeing you uh, next week on The House Whisperer. Yeah, see you on the radio. And tune in again next week for another edition of The House Whisperer Show with professional home inspector Jack Milne. And to listen to previous programs or if you have any questions, visit thehousewhisperershow.com.